Gaudi é foda, né? Hey y'all, so I'm back with another video. It's been a few days, so it's time to drop another one. So today we're going to do a story time and an eyelash video. Two in one. Two and one, two and one type of video. And yeah, so hopefully y'all like this video. I didn't write anything down for this story time. I'm just going off of the top of my head. So hopefully, you know, it just flow. But this story time is about something very, 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 very recent. Okay. It was um basically I'm just be explaining my experience um while working in a call center. So yeah. So I'm going to tell y'all that story while also doing my eyelashes. And I'm going to start off by showing y'all the eyelashes I have. Because I've done an eyelash video before, but I'm not using those same eyelashes. I like those, but it's just today I went to Ulta and I saw these. So these are the focus. Okay, it kind of focus. These are Ardell, the Ardell eyelashes brand, but it's the Seamless Underlash Extension um, Faux Mink Clusters. So this what these are. They were $5.99. Now, it do have, um, it's a kit that come with these with Ardell. I didn't get the kit. I just got the clusters because I'm using the glue I always use and I already got tweezers and stuff. So I just bought the clusters just to see how I like them. Um, I do like that they got the sizes on the, the size of each lash. So it start with 10, 12, 14, and then it got 16s too. So 10 through 16 in this um, package. So yeah, um, we're gonna try these today and see how I like them. And hopefully y'all like my story too. So we might to get right into it. Today I'm using uh don't judge me don't judge okay i'm trying to debate I'm trying to debate trying to debate because i nine times out of ten i'm using hair glue don't judge me it works for me it works for me but i'm using hair glue okay don't judge then i got my tweezers now okay let me hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on i got this glue right here now this is the duo duo yeah, duo, uh, strip left, strip lash, dang, dang, strip lash adhesive in dark tone. So, I mean, I can use this if I'm trying to be, you know, proper. Yeah, so I might use this because this is giving ghetto. I ain't gonna lie, it's giving a little ghetto, what up, what up, but it be working, though. it be working. But, okay, I'm gonna try using this, see how I like it. And then I showed y'all the lashes. We got a pair of tweezers. And I used this, my little eyelash um, wand curler to curl my natural lashes. I already did that though. But you know, you just put it on here, close, curl them up for a couple seconds, let go. And that's that. Nothing to it, nothing to it. But yeah, so those are the supplies. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just put some... This, I'm gonna use this glue, the duo lash glue out and then just start applying my lashes. Now, like I was saying, these have 10 mm through is it millimeters? 10, 10, 10 mm through 16 as far as the size. Now, 16 I feel like is too long for me. Like, I don't like them long, dramatic spider looking lashes. I can't, that ain't for me. So, I feel like 16 is mad long. Like, I can't do 16. 16 down here. So, I feel like 14 going to be my longest. So, I might do 10, 12. No, 6. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I'm going to do 10, 12, and 14. Yeah, 10, 12, and 14. So, I'll do two 10s in the front. Maybe three 12s. And then two 14s. I'm thinking that's what I'm doing. Two tens, three twelves, two fourteens. If I can fit that many on my eye, we'll see. If not, then it's just gonna be two, two, two of each. Two tens, two twelves, two fourteens. But yeah, we'll figure it out as we go. But okay, 
so where do I start? Where do I start with this story time? Okay, so around July of this year, July 2023, I was looking for a new job. Currently, well, at the time, I was working two part-time jobs and I needed more money. And I was like, I just need to start working full-time. So, you know, I started applying to different jobs, applying, applying, applying. And then I got a call back from this company. And I'm not going to tell you all the company, but just know it was, um, it's in healthcare. Okay. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Healthcare is the industry. And I was working in the billing department. Um, and it was like call center style. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not going to tell y'all the company. But, um, yeah. So, you know, I get a call from them. And, you know, they we set up an interview. I go do the interview. And the interview was, it was high. Like, I was in a room with four people, three supervisors and one trainer. And, you know, they asked all, like, the interview questions. You know, tell me about yourself. And they ask you those scenario questions. Like, name a time when this happened. Name a time when that happened. You know interview stuff so you know go through the interview and then uh after the interview done i don't know how long it took but it wasn't that long before i knew i got the job so you know i do all of the stuff you gotta do to get a job but then you know first day you go to, um okay well first day i had to actually go to the corporate building um and do my orientation which was just like uh, a presentation they tell you like about the company their mission their vision their goals and all that stuff and then i was in a room with maybe like eight or nine other people that were starting too and it was actually another girl there and we were starting we was going to be working in the same department had the same supervisor and so yeah we went through that got our badges made like had to go take our pictures get our badges they gave us like a little welcome box with like um what had it? it was a water bottle a notebook a, little stuff like that um a little thing to put on our badge like a little middle thing that had the company name on it to put on your badge like little stuff like that like a pen you know so went through that and then that lasted maybe like an hour and a half two hours and then i had to drive to the actual building i'll be working in because i was working in the billing department so i was in like a office type of building so I get there and meet my supervisor and then a the girl who I did orientation with, you know, me now it's just me and her and the supervisor. He just setting us up like we was in cubicles and just getting our stations put together. So just to fast forward, like we went through training. Training was okay, so technically you're in training for your first 90 days. So that's like your training. Okay, hold on, y'all. So training is like it's 90 days, first three months. And like, um, basically we had to learn the system as far as like how we do different building things on the computer. And then we had to, you know, just get used to like talking on the phone with patients. Oh shoot, this might not work now. Okay, and this, this is the glue I don't use. So I might have to go back to what worked for me, you know. Don't be talking about me, but I'm telling you. But we're going to see. Hold on. But anyway, um, yeah, so we're going through training. And they break training up. Like, you don't learn everything at one time. It's like the first week, you do, like, all the onboarding and stuff. You're doing, like, different modules on the computer, learning about the, the company itself, and then learning a little bit about what you'll be doing. And then maybe, like, the second week, we go into the training room, and then we might learn just how to... um like open patient's accounts, how to search a, a patient's name or using an account number to find that patient's account and just look at everything that they got going on as far as like, you know, different dates of services, different charges, different insurances, stuff like that. So we did that. And trainer was cool. Like the trainer, he made cool. He made it fun, chill. Like trainer was cool. What nothing bad about training. And so, you know, that went along and then um we just slowly started like getting into the system so the first thing we did once we learned how to navigate through the system was learning how to um what we call return mail so just say this company sends out a statement to a patient showing like their bill and let's just say it's sent to this address 
but that's not the correct address for that patient. So that person at that address would send the statement back to this um, company and they would say like, you know, wrong address, not correct person or whatever. And so we'll get that back, the statement back, and then we'll have to look at the person's name, open it, and then it'll tell you their account number. You go to their account number and you'll mark that account as return mail. So that way we know we don't have the correct address on this patient and we need to stop sending statements to that address that's on their account until we update it. So that's the first thing we learned how to do was go through the mail that was sent back to us and mark accounts as return mail. Then after that, you learned how to, um, what was after that? I think after that, just like learning how to maybe like add insurance or how to adjust the insurance, undo billing, and look at claims, different stuff like that. So training was cool. So fast forward, um, now it's time for us to start listening in on calls. So um, you had a few people that worked in the office. And when I say a few, like, <laughs> that was like on the phones talking to patients that worked in the office. And then everybody else was working from home. And so... Uh, and also, y'all, this was a work from home job. So after you're done with your 90 days, you once you're approved, um, you can start working from home. Like you get sent home and work. And so it was like two people in the office. And so the girl who I started with, she was able to train with the lady who was in the office already. She'd been there for a while. She know what she's doing. So she got in person training, the girl I started with. Me, I got assigned to have someone that work from home train me. So how they do, they use Microsoft Teams and we um we on the computer together while she's training me. So with Microsoft Teams, she can share her screen with me. I can see everything she's doing and I have a headset on. I can hear her call too. So I can hear what the patient's saying to her and I can hear what she's saying to the patient. So I'm just watching her screen, listening to the calls just to see like how everything go as far as like, you know, interacting with patients over the phone about their bills. So, you know, I'm doing that. And the girl who trained me, she was cool. Um, we actually was the same age. And, you know, she was chill. You know, we would be talking in between, like, the calls just about, like, random stuff. She'd be telling me stuff about her life. And, you know, just just talking, chatting it up, you know. And so, as that go along, you know, once they feel like, you know, you're comfortable um, after hearing calls and just seeing how to do different things, now it's your turn to start taking calls and she'll listen in just to make just to be there just in case if I need to ask her something I can mute myself so the patient can't hear me I can ask her a question real quick about what the patient's asking me and you know just in case I need some help and um so she'll listen in on my calls and she can see my screen now to see like what I'm doing all that and she can hear the patient so it'll be time I'm in the middle of talking to the patient and I just hear snoring <laughs> Sound like a grown man just snoring and i'm like what's going on but the patient can't hear this so the patient's just talking 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 but i can't even hear what the patient's saying because i got this snoring in my ear and so i'll mute myself like on the on the what we call it a soft phone so it's not an actual phone we had on our desk that what the patients would call it's like a little digital phone that's on the computer so i'll mute that so the patient can't hear me and i'll say hey let's just call this girl um jasmine who trained me i was like hey jasmine 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 trying to wake her up she is knocked out like she knocked out so now it's like okay she not waking up she didn't mute her mic so i'm hearing her snore and the patient's talking to me but i really don't know what they asking me because i can't hear so i'll try to play the call off and then thankfully you know i'll be able to get the patient off the phone and then I went, but I went and set the new call until like, I knew this girl was awake because don't be snoring in my ear. What is wrong with you? You supposed to be helping me like we're in training. Like what if the patient would have asked me something I didn't know what to do. And then I'm trying to ask you real quick so I can answer the patient or do what they need me to do. You over here snoring. So now I'm just left for dead. I'm just out here on the phone with the patient sitting in silence looking stupid. So I was waiting till she woke up before I take another call. So like my phone would be in not ready. So a call wouldn't come through on my end. So she'll wake up and I'm like, hey, did you hear anything? Because I didn't want to be, I don't know. I wasn't trying to be like rude. Like, again, I don't know this girl. I've met her through the computer. Like I've never seen her in person. 
to this day. Like, I don't know who she is for real. But, like, I only met her on the computer. So, like, I'm not trying to be rude. But I'm like, hey, did you hear that person, that what that patient, um, like, was asking me? And she was like, oh, no, I, I think, um, what did she say? She didn't say she was sleeping. I guess she didn't realize her mic was muted, so like I heard her snoring. But she went. She didn't say she was sleeping. She said something like, "No, I think I had my my mic low or something like that to where like she couldn't hear." But I'm like, "Girl, you was knocked out. You was knocked out. I know you didn't hear." And she did that like I swear like once a day, and when she was um listening in on my calls, be knocked out, sleep snoring, and I'm like, "Yo, it's crazy." But thankfully, it's also, it was people around me. So, like, I could ask the girl who I started with. She was in training as well. But we still, like, knew stuff. We was learning stuff. And we would have our notes in front of us. So, like, if the girl who was listening in on my calls was knocked out asleep, I could still ask people around me questions if I needed to. But it's just the principle. Like, bro, if you're supposed to be training me, why are you knocked out asleep? Like... And then you ain't even mute your mic. Like, be for real. You was snoring like a grown man in my ear. Like, come on now. At least mute the mic. But, yeah. So, that was the first thing that happened. Which I was just like, yo, this is crazy. Like, this girl just really fell asleep like this. And she did it once a day. Like, no exaggeration. She, I knew every time I um, went to work, I knew she was going to fall asleep at least once today. Like, at least once. But that wasn't even nothing crazy. That wasn't bad. Like, it was whatever. Because as I kept doing the calls, like, I really ain't need her help at one point. Like, I knew what I was doing. So it was cool. It was just more so, like, mute yourself. So at least when they talk to me, I can hear what they asking. But anyway, so that was the first thing, though. Like, training wasn't bad. But, like, when she was training me, I, I sure was just, like, do they give me a good person to like train with? I ain't gonna lie, I was nervous at first because I'm just like, what is going on? But she was a good trainer overall and she was cool. It's just like the girl will fall asleep randomly. It was just, I don't know. I, she might have had sleeping disorder or something. I don't know. But yeah. So after training, I think I sat with her, I said maybe like, it was like a month and a half collectively like maybe two and a half weeks i was listening to her calls and then the rest of the time she was listening to my calls and then after that we we're on our own baby we on our own like she not there no more we're just doing our own calls and so eventually you know we were still in the office still in our 90 days like you can't go home to after your 90 days so i'm you know just doing the calls on my own and stuff and you know Really, I didn't get no bad calls while I was in the office. Like, as far as the patients being rude and stuff. Like, nobody was rude. And you know how customer service is. Sometimes people be crazy, but I didn't get no calls. Now, the girl who I started with, she was getting some bad calls. Like, people cursing her out and stuff. But I never got that, thankfully. But, um, yeah. So, once it was time for our 90 days. Now, oh, let me back up. So, I was a supervisor a joke by the way um he he one of the supervisors you can tell he i feel like he really just don't he either don't know what he doing or he just don't care neither one is good but um yeah either he just don't know what he doing and he just going through the motions or he truly just don't care and you know how you can just tell when somebody just faking and flying and, and like just trying to tell you anything just to get you at at their face he he one of those so it's like times where we might need his help and have to message message him on teams or something he won't answer or he was like he, he either won't answer or when he answered it's like the patient gone now like i don't need help anymore so most of the time we was in the office we would always go to the trainer and ask some questions and he was cool so he didn't mind helping us he would make comments like y'all know i'm not your supervisor but he'll say it like in a joking way. He'll still help us. But he ain't lying though. He not a supervisor. Like we need help. You post to go to your supervisor. But I was just not reliable. Like at all. And for some things you have to get supervisors to approve. Or like how they had it separated in the system. He only did one part and the other supervisor did the other part. So it's like if it's this type of account. You have to go to him to like ask questions or you know, depending on what the situation is. So you kind of need him for a few things. 
but he just he wasn't standing on business and so and that man out of all the supervisors i didn't had i feel like he was like the worst like for real but nobody in the office had anything i'm saying no one who i worked with who was on the phones had anything good to say like everybody was like yeah he gonna he not gonna do stuff in a timely fashion when you ask him to do it you're gonna have to keep constantly asking him to do different things and i just feel like you as a grown man and as a supervisor i shouldn't have to be going down your throat to try to get my pto approved when i put it in a month ago like why well, i still don't know if i'm approved yet or if i message you about an account and i'm telling you this need to be done and like the patient upset about it and they're gonna call back like in a week to check on it and get an update and then when they call back it still ain't done now they cursing us out because you didn't even check the account at all and it's like what you got going on like and it was plenty of times where he was supposed to do something on a patient account it never got done like weeks will go by patient constantly calling it never got done and then you know after about the third time when you calling somewhere you're like okay i need to speak to a supervisor because i'm not getting done even though it's the supervisor who's not getting it done people will request to talk to him and then we're like okay we'll message him be like hey a patient you know they upset about this this and this they want to speak with you he'll just not take the call or send the voicemail and it's like bro what are we doing here what are we doing so it was stuff like that and it's just like how are we supposed to be productive if we never can get nothing done how are we supposed to be productive and then that gets frustrated on our end when now the patient gonna keep calling and because nothing's getting done they can't never talk to a supervisor now at this point they just call them to curse people out because people are getting tired or just waiting and waiting and waiting and then they wait so long accounts get sent to collections because you ain't do what you're supposed to do as far as like the claims and all that what is this? so yeah it's like now people just cursing people us out the phone representatives and it ain't even our fault it's not even our fault so it was plenty of times when that stuff would happen like he was just not a helpful supervisor at all like you can go you can go to him about nothing and like i said you put in pto i put in pto let's just say in july for just say i need halloween off okay so that's months in advance right here come the week of halloween i still don't know if i'm off and i go to him and be like hey i sent you this pto like months ago and like i don't know if i'm approved yet He'll be like, oh, I got to check the calendar. If it's more than two people off on that same day, then you can't get off. Even though I just sent this request in months ago. Like, what do you mean? I don't care if it's five people off. I sent this request in months ago. You should approve it just off the strength of why it take you this long to even look at a request. And then the rule, I don't know if it's the company rule or this his rule because he just be making up stuff. But he would tell us if more than two people is off on one day, you know, no more than two people can be off on the same day but he will include himself in, in the people even though he don't be on the phone so if he there or not that doesn't affect how many people are able to answer a call so it's like how are you able to count yourself as one of the people that can be off when you don't even be on the phones like that's the whole point you don't want too many people off the phone so we're gonna have so many calls just waiting in the queue but you're gonna include yourself in that two people count I don't know why, because you really shouldn't be in there. Like, no one cares if you're here or not. You don't help regardless. But he was just not a helpful supervisor. Like, that man ain't know. I don't, he don't know what he does, to say the least. Um, But once our 90 days were up, you know, we done went through training. We've been on the phone by ourselves for a little bit. And I was like, okay, 90 days up. Okay. Y'all about to send me home. I'm ready to work from home. You know, I'm ready to get out this office. Yada, yada, yada. So, I believe it took him two weeks after our 90-day mark to get everything in order to send us home. So, he finally come to us. And me and the girl I started with, we went home on the same day. So, he come to both of us and was like, okay, um... 
y'all be going home today around like 10 30. i'm gonna have a, a it man come up and you know give y'all y'all equipment and show y'all how y'all gotta do a special login from work and all that stuff you know so we we geeked up we like period we going to the house this is my first work from home job. I'm like, I ain't got to wake up early to drive up here no more. I can be at work in my pajamas. I can eat breakfast on the clock. Like, you know, it's like, okay, I'm ready. Send me home. So we get all the stuff. I took man and show us how to do everything. We good. Pack our stuff in the car. We driving on. Head to the house. We get to the house. We set up the equipment. You know, oh, and let me tell y'all, I would be geeked to be at the house working from home. I'd order me a new desk. I'd have got me a little desk chair. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm getting the set up ready. You know, I put my computer on the desk. I got two monitors, keyboard, headphones, everything. I got my papers all on the wall so I can know all the information I need to know. I'm ready. Okay? I'm ready. What I tell y'all, the only day I enjoyed working from home was the first day, setting up the stuff. After that, I said, oh, what, what is this? What is this? This ain't, this ain't what I thought. This is not what I thought. I don't want it no more. I don't want it. Take it back, because I don't want it. Because when I tell y'all, work from home, it got crazy. It got crazy. And I ain't had no warning. I ain't had no warning. We went into this blind. We went into this blind. Let's just say, I never work from home again if I gotta be on the phone. Never again. Never again. So, I got everything set up, you know, and I get on the phone. And I don't know if it's like, it just seemed like when you start working from home, that's when the calls got crazy. The patients got crazy. The manager got even more crazier. Other people in the departments that we had to reach out to for different problems got crazy. And I'm like, everybody tripping. Everybody tripping. And then the expectations that they had on us got crazy. Because, like, it wasn't like a certain amount of calls we had to answer, like, per day or anything. But we had like call stats and this man was saying, okay, he first started off just sending like the group as a whole call stats each day. Like we was all on a team. So like he would just send a group call stats. So he would just say, as a group, we had a thousand calls today. And as a group, we was able to answer 950 calls. I'm just throwing out numbers and just say that percentage will be 3% is your abandonment rate as far as how many calls we didn't answer and i know the abandonment rate they didn't want to over three percent i think it was but yeah so he'll just like a group stat which is like that's cool whatever but then i don't know where he starts sending up group stats and individual stats like he'll send a group stat and then he'll have a whole chart of everybody named individual how many calls were sent to your phone? How many calls you answered? How many calls was returned? How long you was not ready? How long you was talking to patients? How long you was logged in? And then your abandonment rate percentage. And it's like, what you, what you putting everybody business out there like that for? Like, who told you to do all that? Who told you to do all that? Why are you sitting there? And then he'll send it every day. Every day. And then he'll be like, oh no. The abandonment rate at four percent that's too high and it'd be like we might have missed like 10 calls it was one day we and it was still early like y'all we opened at eight o'clock he sent this it was no later than like it was no later than 10 because we didn't even take our first break yet okay he sent the call stats like as a group so far we had like 157 calls and we answered like 154 Oh no, this too high, this too high. Three calls? Three calls? Sir, it's too early for you to be doing all this. It is 9.30 and you took my three calls? And then my thing was, it's not like 
we can really control the abandonment rate that much. Because if a patient just hang up because they don't want to hold, I can't control that. And you up here complaining about three calls. Like, bro, if, when you go answer them three calls, then since you so pressed, like, stuff like that was so annoying. He would do that every day, every other hour. Like, not even being funny, he would send that stuff, like, two to three times a day. And it's just like, fool, chill. We haven't took our first 15 yet. And you up here talking about, oh, oh, three calls, the abandonment rate too high, three calls. Please. So, yeah, that game, game got annoying for real. And, like, what you doing out there for? And then, like, you sending everybody individual stats to, like, like the whole group. I'm like, don't be doing all that. Like, you ain't got to even do all that. You ain't got to do all that. Like, for real, you don't have to do all that. So, yeah, he started doing that stuff. The calls started getting crazy. And then... <clears throat> Like, not for nothing, like, people are really stupid out here. Not even to be mean, like, people are really slow. And you really realize that common sense is not common when you start working in a call center. Because, like, sometimes I just be like, I, what's the logic? Like, how did you come up with that? And working in this call center just made me realize it don't matter nobody's age. You can be 85 years old and you still ain't got no sense. You can be 25 years old, ain't got no sense. You can be 40, ain't got no sense. Like, people age literally don't mean nothing. Because people really don't have sense. Or I don't know if it's, they think they can, um, what you call it? What I'm looking for? They can, um, dang, it's on the tip of my tongue. Like, rules don't apply to them. But that's not really what I want to say. But that's basically what I'm trying to get at. Like, I don't know, book the system. That one, that's also a whole other country. But, like, they could just book the system. Like, it's giving to Lulu. And a lot of these people was the Lulu on the phone. But I'm going to end this video right here. It's definitely going to be a part two. It's just it's getting mad long. And I don't want one video an hour long. So I'm going to break it up. And then in the other video, I'm going to finish my eyelashes. So... Yeah, we're going to stop right here. Next video, I'm going to tell you about the crazy patients I had to talk to. And then how one little incident that just blew me and was really what initiated my process of realizing, like, it's time for me to leave this job. But thank y'all for watching this part. Tune in for part two. I'm going to upload it literally right after this. And we're going to finish this story time. I'm not going to leave y'all hanging like the other story time that I still got to finish. So yeah, but thank y'all for watching this part and I'm gonna see y'all in part two.